Welcome to SEMCAST. I'm Dale Meyer. This year marks the 200th anniversary of the birth of Dr. C.F.W. Walther, the first president of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, as well as the founder and first president of Concordia Seminary. To celebrate this event, Concordia Seminary has produced a new five-part Bible study centered around Dr. Walther's life and story. To tell us about this project, joining us is the film director, Dale Ward. Dale, let me first of all congratulate you and the people of the seminary, our seminary, for the initiative, the creativity, and who knows how many hours that have gone into producing this thing. It, as I watched it, and, and I'm very privileged to watch it, I thought, wow, the work that went into this is amazing. So, lots that's of people. Back. Yeah. Lots of people. I mean, is it, film is a collaborative effort, and no, no more so than a, a period piece like this. Uh, we had more than 150 actors, so just, just that number, plus each one has to have a costume, and, you know, so that doubles uh, the numbers right there. Yes, lots of help, and Lots of hours, but uh, a lot of people came forward and was excited to be a part of it. How'd you get into the project in the first place? It actually stems back for me for a year ago when Concordia Seminary event, the, the Lutheran Hostel, had a trip down to Perry County, and myself and Shannon Wiseman, who uh, works with me, we went down there. Dr. Donald Meisner went along, and we mic'd him, and uh, I thought it would be a good time to get it, kind of the story. And we were just kind of blown away by the whole story of it. I, I had known a little bit of the story, but not the full realm of it. And I came back and I'm like, oh, and there's, there's more than a five minute video here. <laughs> so it just kind of grew from there. One of the things that struck me as I watched it is that this is excellent for Bible study. If I were still a parish pastor, and parish pastors, here's my tip I'd use it. I would use it in Bible class and wherever possible because it provides an opportunity not only to teach about our church but how what the church is and how the church functions and it does it with a little bit of uh, controversy and intrigue so t tell us about the Bible study aspect of this film basically the the, the movie the, the narrative feature is two hours and then we have broken that down into 30 minute sections for a a four-part Bible study, and there's a fifth part, we'll talk about that in a minute. But each one of those, like part one is when they were in Germany and they were coming head to head with rationalism and the, uh, the, the liberal state church. And you know that kind of mirrors some of the things we see today. So we thought, well, that's, that's kind of a good Bible study section on rationalism and liberalism. Two kingdoms, you know, they were challenged by dealing with the, the, the state church and what that meant. You know, do they bow down to authority or do they stand up for their Lutheran beliefs? Part two gets more into when they're coming over here and they get to America, come up to St. Louis and then Perry County. But there's some issues with people coming forward with confession and absolution. You know, what is private confession? That is... Uh, Catholic roots, but it, it goes through all the way back to Martin Luther. And then part three uh, gets into Walther's, you know, famous for his long gospel, but I learned how much he is a part of church government, and, and we have voters' meetings once a month, and a lot of that's Walther. And so we kind of touch on that and how he really thought it was important that the, the, the layperson and the clergy both work together and both have voices. That, that came out very clearly when the, the lay people rebelled against the dominance by the pastors. And I'm thinking, this is here now, this is today. So yeah, go ahead. And then part four kind of culminates in the Altenburg debate, which he actually took, took that issue and some of the other issues head to head with Dr. Marbach, who was saying everybody should go back to Germany because they never should have left. And, and uh, well, that's the whole debate, which took several days, but we kind of get it down to a couple minutes. <laughs> but, but like you said, though, that's why we just want to kind of give the tip of the iceberg, and then the pastors in the congregation can get into it as much or as little as they, as they want. Yeah, thank you. I, I, again, as a, as a pastor, I think this is a great teaching aid. Now, there's a lot of history in this. Uh, we're talking the 19th century. Did you use historians 
to make sure that you got the story right? After 30 minutes of the movie, we'll have 20, 30 minutes of historians, professors from Concordia Seminary here in St. Louis, and we also went to Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, and we talked with, you know, every Walther expert that we could find. We even talked with the archivist, Don Trinity Soulard, to really help flesh this out. And we did, we did that kind of early on, so that actually helped me in my research, too, if I had things correct or not. So we have Dr. Will Schumacher, we have Dr. Cameron McKenzie, we have Dr. Larry Rast, we have Dr. Tom Eggers, and we have Dr. Gerhard Bode, uh, and Dr. Thomas Manteuffel of the professors that we've used from the two institutions. And uh, they, it was great to have them all talk about, because they, they're passionate about the subject themselves. Right. How about the actors? Where did you find the actors? We actually did a Craigslist, uh, and there's also a couple of other websites that you can put on audition information, and people came in to audition. Some are Lutherans, some knew the story. Many of them did not know anything about it. We're just excited to be in a, a period piece because that's always fun to get to play dress up. And uh, we had, like I say, 150 actors. Most of those are, are extras, but there are a couple dozen fairly larger roles. Jordan Reinwald did a great job as CFW Walther. And uh, we also have Jim King as Pastor Labor. And Tim Garnett uh, stepped up and did Martin Steffen. And, and some of these, they, they actually auditioned for different parts. And we had to kind of say, you know, we might fit better here. Uh, we had to age Tim Garnett a little bit because he's younger than what Martin Steffen was, was, uh, actually was. You talk about aging. Uh, most of the movie is the early years when they emigrated from Germany, came here. The debate whether this is or is not the church, the resolution of that debate from the Altenburg debate. And then you kind of fast forward to uh, Walther at the end of his life, and, and you aged Walther. You yeah, that was fun. We had a uh, makeup artist come in, an old on Main Street makeup artist, actually. That whole aspect of Walther's life as a filmmaker made it a little easier for me because he did this, and he started this, and he founded this, and he built the church, and he got this newspaper going, and he did this, and, and then he turned 30. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so it kept... Uh, they kept a lot of the, the, the bulk of things uh, in, in his early life. You know, of course, and he maintained all that throughout his life. But we did, of course, we, we brought in a Friday night lecture. He's famous for those. That was fun to do. We which was the source of the, the book Law Gospel, which every seminarian and pastor reads. You know, what he actually says is pulled from the uh, translation that we have of the, the Law and Gospel. I teach homiletics, so I noticed that one of the quotations was, don't stand up in your pulpits like lifeless statues. I, I love that quotation. Don't look like lifeless statues, Dr. Walther wrote. A sermon he had, I pulled from what I'd found, letters he wrote. You know, we wanted to really stick to the uh, history as much as How about as the could. letter proposing marriage to Emily? That, it was interesting. I did not know that that happened until Is I got into real? the story. That's a real letter. I, I still wonder if that's kind of was a norm back then because these days you wouldn't think it at wouldn't work all today. of it writing would, a letter. It to, wouldn't uh, work maybe today. we could text, uh, <laughs> will you marry me? Um, but he actually uh, I, wrote th a I, mean, I thought he would have taken her to the St. Louis Cardinals and had, had it on the, the big Scoreboard, you know, that, Emily, that will you work. marry that me? Work, no, yeah. no, no, okay. Right there in two different cities, and wrote a letter, and uh, yeah, she said, she said yes. When, when before we started running tape here, I asked you about the one scene where there, there's a two-story New Orleans-style balcony, and in, and in fact, they are in New Orleans. But my question was, where did you find that New Orleans-style hotel with a second-floor balcony? We used. Bonnets Mill, which is just on side of Jeff City, which is about a two-hour drive. I discovered a hotel on the internet, just searching to find something that would look like New Orleans. And if you see it in the in real life, it's just a building sitting by itself, uh, where New Orleans is is a you know a whole parade of these these buildings. But it has the two-story hotel, and the the uh, rooms all lead out to the second floor. So I was bingo, that would work. They let us come in and shoot there. Clarksville, Missouri is up the river about uh, 75 miles. It was established in 1840. That's our St. Louis Riverfront. They let us shoot there. And of course, we use Saxon Luther Memorial 
down in Perry County, which uh, could not have done the film without the uh, log cabins and stuff down there. And Old Germany, it's right here at the Concordia Seminary campus. Like we were fortunate that it's been designed to look like uh, Old Germany. And that's, you know, the bulk of it. We, we did uh, shoot a scene uh, in Clearwater for the boat scene coming across the Atlantic. So, you know, there's some Hollywood aspect. It's not the Atlantic, it's Tampa Bay. What water did uh, Walther fall into with his horse when he was crossing the river and he... The and Apple Creek, yeah. It wasn't really the Apple Creek, although we did go over the Apple Creek numerous times on our trips from St. Louis to Frona. That's a, a place on, on the Big River, it's out towards Six Flags in St. Louis, uh, not too far from downtown. We had somebody that has a, a house right there and they let us shoot that and yeah that was fun here it is here's the dvd of the movie and i assume that this is available for people to get the first thing we're going to do is distribute it to all the uh, lcms churches and schools it'll come as a a five-part bible study it'll be four discs one disc would be the two-hour movie you can watch through it you know from start to finish we thought it might be good if churches could use that as a, a, a movie night to invite the neighborhood and then they could come back for a Bible study and watch it split up, which would be disc two and three, which would be parts one and two and three and four. And then the third disc is uh, part five, which is, uh, which you're in part of that. What we, what we did, we were able to go and interview all of the current and still surviving presidents that Walther was also president of. So the LCMS presidents, the Concordia Seminary St. Louis presidents, and the presidents at Fort Wayne. He was a president there while it was in St. Louis. So that is um, nine or ten people, and that was neat to talk with them because here's, here's some gentlemen that are actually living in his footsteps, they're actually walking and doing some of the things he did. I know the feeling. And uh, we, uh, yes, we, we ask you some of the questions. So I think that would be a neat, a neat piece of history, some of this oral storytelling. I mean, there's, there's history right there of the last 50 years. So our viewers can watch Concordia St. Louis publicity, check our website for more information on how to get all these materials. How are you going to roll the movie out? The churches, they say, will get a copy in the mail, and they all should have had uh, some, a little bit of PR about it uh, prior to, because his 200th birthday, as you said, is in October, and we want to have it there available that they can do the five-part Bible study during the month of October on those Sundays leading up to his birthday, which is, well, just the, the Tuesday before Reformation Day, but uh, it kind of fits. And if they want to wait till you know, next year, or, or you know, that's fine too. And then we do want to try and get it out to film festivals so that people in certain cities around the, the country could go to actually see it in a movie theater. Uh, we maybe get some broadcast of it. We want to, you know, track those uh, avenues down too. But the main goal is to get this DVD collection to the churches. Well, that sounds ambitious. And once again, returning to where we started, I want to thank you and all your staff for the, the creativity, the industry and and all that you've had to do to make this happen this is this is a great production and concordia seminary is proud of all of you and to you who are watching again this is relevant it might be 19th century history and you, sometimes we think history is dry but concordia seminary dale ward and the staff have put this together in a way that's very relevant you know what is it that makes the church uh, and, and, and how there's a church that does not have correct doctrinal teaching. Is that still the church? And, and all these great, great relevant questions. So underneath the dust of history, this is something that uh, a congregation really can benefit from. I certainly hope you get the chance to see the film and especially to participate in the Bible study. My thanks to you. Thanks for joining us today on SEMCAST. I'm Dale Meyer, and I'll see you next time. You can't burst in here like this!
Can the government make laws determining when a person sees their pastor and when they do not? Show me specific examples of where I have given you a, a confusion about law and gospel. <laughs>